Hello and welcome back to tutorial number five of our WPF real world application. I am Jeff Burke and when we left the last time we had just created a new window called amphibians keeping in uh, track with our zoo type uh, topics of uh, the application for our customer and we were able to move from the main window to the secondary window of amphibians. Now our problem when we ran it the last time, let's go ahead and run it, is that we come up we have our label over here which we set up as a control to move to the next window but when we get into the next window which is our amphibians window when we close it, you can see that we're still in the debug mode. There, the, the program is actually still running because our main window was hidden and we did not bring it back. So now what we need to do is go into debug, stop debugging so that we stop our program. And we're going to have to write a little code here in the amphibians window in order to control what happens when it ends. So let's go into our amphibians.xaml in our layout uh, uh, area, uh, highlight the window definition in our XAML area, and again go to our properties window. Now in the properties window there's going to be of course uh, many selections. We have our icon for the event handlers. We're not looking at actually the individual properties. So in the event handlers for our window there is a uh, section that allows us to choose what we want uh, the actions to uh, be when the window closed. So in our case we're actually looking for closed. We want to have something happen when that window closed. So as usual we're going to double click in this area next to closed and it will take us to our code section of amphibians and it's provided us an event handler for window closed. At the time that the window closes we need certain actions to happen. One of those things of course is going to be to show the main window. Now when we uh, created our code in the main window uh, in, for the main window and we initialized or if uh, when we uh, ran the amphibians constructor and created a, a instance of it we showed the second window which is amphibians and we hit our main window so really the main window is already there the same session is running on that we started and when we close our amphibians window we really only need to show the main window because we passed a main window uh, variable through the constructor of the amphibians we can simply say main window which is our variable and dot show this is as simple as it gets because the main window variable is directly connected to the main window that we passed. So we're talking about showing what that main window was, bringing it back up, however you want to say it. So let's go ahead and run the program this time and what we should get is we should get our main window that comes up, we have our label and we go into the amphibians uh, window when we close that it shows the main window again so that we can continue on our path of uh, uh, of using the software or the client or uh, the people that purchase it from our uh, client uh, can continue using the application. So next though what we need to do is we've now been able to create this control between the two windows or navigation between the two windows which is fine. So we can add more labels 
do it the same way for other windows and that gets us back and forth between the windows and uh, quite simply that's the navigational aspect of windows is to keep the main instance open hide it bring it in but we also are going to have some user controls that are going to be in all the windows and we want those the state of what is selected by the person using the application to maintain through the window so if I have for instance we're going to add a label let's I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so that I can go down to the bottom here and down on this left hand corner I'm going to put a control for the vocabulary now what is the vocabulary we know that in part of our description of what we need is that the ability to turn and off and hover text and the ability to turn and on and off uh, the hover of audio what that means is that when somebody hovers over say the button that says amphibians there'll be a text area that comes up and an audio file that starts and the auto audio file is going to be uh, what we consider the vocabulary if you will for lack of a better word uh, or no sorry the narration we're gonna call the audio files the narration and the vocabulary files is going to be connected to the text but anything that you want to call it on the point being is that we're going to have a control that can be turned on and off by the person using the software and they could turn it on or off in any one of the windows and then go back and go into other windows so whatever state they have selected needs to maintain throughout their experience while they're using the application so how are we going to do that well this is how we're going to do that in the main window xaml dot cs file in our code we're gonna come up into the uh, main partial class area and we're gonna create a couple variables that we can use to pass around between the windows we're gonna keep them re relatively simple they're just gonna be uh, they're gonna be public because of course we're gonna use them across and they're going to be a bool a bool is a a data type which is true or false one or two it, it, it can only be one or the other so in our case it's going to be true and false and we're gonna call that the main oh near flag and that's going to be our variable that we've created for narration control now in that we're going to have to have something on our main window that allows us to operate that control and one of those uh, and again I'm going to use a label it gives me a little bit more of the flexibility that I like so over here in our text box just grab a label and bring it on to your main window again the definition of that text box gets uh, a, sorry the label uh, gets brought into the uh, XML definition area and tells us that what that label is we're going to have to give it a name and that name that we're going to give to that particular uh, item is label narration how about that Na label narration so LB narration and we'll indicate it with control so simple as that we have an LB narration it's added that name into that now we have a way to identify that that is the item that we're talking about when we start to make control code uh, when we want something to happen now we're going to need this same control on our narration page so over here again bring in a label pop it onto your window it's going to be down here in the bottom it puts that label into uh, the definition area and we're going to give it a name and the name over here is going to be the same name as the main except that we're going to prefix it with amp amp label narration
control. So we know it's the uh, label narration control. We know that this particular one is the one that is on the amphibian window. So that's how we're going to be able to tell the two apart when we start writing code and how we're going to pass between. When we do that, it provides the name as you saw on the last one and that is our first steps to being able to go back and forth. So now go back into your main window uh, XAML in our uh, uh, layout and uh, setup. Look over here, we're going to go back into now the event handlers of our label that we just made. And we're going to go to our mouse down and double click mouse down. So at that point we've now created an event handler. So what happens when the mouse down goes on the narration button? Well we want it to toggle between on and off. So to simulate that for right now we're simply going to change the text of the label so that you can see that it's changing back and forth and that it maintains the state. So this is how we're going to do it. We're simply going to, and I pre-wrote this, but I'll explain what's going on. So if this narration label control the content, which is the text that you see, equals narration on, then we're going to simply change that content to narration off. So we're going to toggle it, and then we're going to set the flag as false. False is going to be off, true is going to be on. Now if it comes in here and it checks for this when you go mouse down and it is not true that narration is on then it's going to set it to narration on. Now obviously we need to set that content up to an initial state for when the window opens. Our initial state here is we'll go into content and instead of label it's going to be narration on. And be aware, it's going to be looking for this to be the same, so we need to make sure that what you put in this content is the initial state is matching what we said. And that is what we're saying, narration on. At that point, we should be able to open our program. And when we click on it, well, that didn't work out well. For some reason, we went over to a ah. For some reason, we did a window mouse down. That was incorrect. I w it was supposed to be a label mouse down on our last control. So I uh, found a mistake by running this. So let's go ahead and fix that. We'll go back over to our layout and everything and I guess we should have seen that the mouse down that we tried to create for the label was actually made for the window. So we're gonna we're gonna take this one off the uh, window. We're gonna go back up here to where our label was and this is our actual label for going to our link. So in here is where we wanted the mouse down. And we're simply going to take this hide information and everything that we worked with before and put it down into that and remove the event handler. So sometimes mistakes happen when you're working and we just kind of fix that. So let's take a look and make sure everything is working correctly now. We should be able to go into pressing our label before we weren't actually pressing the label. It was activating a window. And when we go narration off, narration off and narration, you can see that it toggles. So that's the end of this particular one. And now I'm going to show you how to, in the next video, which will be video six, I believe. Uh, no, video seven, tutorial seven. When we get to tutorial seven, not only will we be able to toggle the uh, content of that label, we're going to be able to pass that information back and forth between the windows that we're operating in the application. So thanks. I hope these things are being helpful. Sorry about the little mistake that we had to work for uh, or work through. And I'll see you next time in Tutorial 7. Bye.